Time to talk a bit of royal news, and our favourite person to do that with is the wonderful Angela Levine. She, of course, wrote the book literally about Harry and uh, Camilla, but she's so much more than that. She joins us now from England as the seasons start to change. How are you, Rockstar? Fine, fine, thank you. Thank goodness. Yes, how are you? I'm doing my best. Uh, now, normally, normally, I would be more than happy with anyone who wants to turn up to a Formula One event. But uh, I must say, uh, Prince Harry, who, of course, is oh so woke and oh so, uh, you know, uh, uh, climate conscious. I was surprised that he was there in big old Texas cheering on, uh, well, last time, petrol powered cars. Yes, he's awful, isn't he? I mean, I think that, you know, in 2019, he spent hours and hours doing this um, travel list, this whole new way of traveling, that you'll be careful where you went, you wouldn't go somewhere where you could spoil it. And he spent hours and hours doing it and, you know, lecturing all of us that we had to do this. And now he's got two grand for it. He has to go only in private planes, like he did when he left um, New York on, on this um, mental health day and he, he was going on holiday in the Caribbean. He could have jumped on a plane, it wouldn't have been too bad, it's not far, but he insisted on a private plane and then he goes off to, you know, to watch the football, the, the, the motor cars whizzing round and I mean he's just such a, such a hypocrite and I don't see why the company now should keep him as a patron. You can't have a patron who's doing absolutely the opposite what he's pretending that everybody else should do. It just doesn't work does it? It just doesn't work. But didn't um, you know Angela in 2023 it's, it's uh, uh, do as I say not do as I do? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, for the occasional thing, okay, but this is just fun and this is just guzzling up the things he says we mustn't even touch. And um, it's, it's a very bad example, isn't it? And how even if he wants people to do that, you, you, you have to set some sort of example and he does the opposite because he's too grand. He's got very, very superior. Actually, it's ironic because he's never been very bright. And he's now lecturing people in a way that hits way above his place, actually. And he just does it because he thinks he's so important now. Um, it's just awful. But you're right, which is that it's up to the company about who represents. I mean, I'm not entirely sure there's much value in Harry being the face of anything. But if he's the face of a company that's all about uh, doing the opposite of what he actually does, how does he hold on to that gig? He must know someone. Yeah, well, it's just the name, isn't it? Prince Harry, that's what it is. And um, as long as he can hang on to that, he's got some sort of thing that people like to have. But it is ridiculous and they should um, be serious about it and, and say, look, Harry, it's fine, you've been great, but really we want someone who doesn't go whizzing around the world in private jets and doesn't go whizzing all over the place to watch um, car racing. It's just not on. Sorry, love. Off you go. Now, you've got some insight about a friend of uh, Queen Elizabeth and her opinion yeah. that Megan really thought that it was all like a film princess uh, rather than the realities that being part of the royal family is, uh, for some, quite a slog. Yes, she would go round in a golden uh, hat, a car or a carriage, and that's what she thought it would be. She would be just a, as if she was starring in a film all the time. Now, I don't believe this, actually, because Harry, who I spent a lot of time with, as you know, um, told me that he spent a lot of time telling her what she should do, what was important, what wasn't so important, how her life would be. Um, and so I'm not sure that this is actually true. But also she, in fact, she decided that the royal family was really like um, a company, like an office. And she started asking for um, money. She felt it was very bad. When she came to Australia, when she was just pregnant, if you remember, and um, she said that she thought she should be paid for every um, engagement that she did. So she was thinking of it like you do in a, in a company, but she also felt that um, when she felt she was suicidal or allegedly suicidal, she went to HR and they said to her, look, we can't help you because we only do staff. 
Um, and she said, well, you've got to help me because nobody would do it. And she said, and they said, well, we really can't. Of course they couldn't. They could do the cooks and the aides and the things like that. What she didn't do was to go to for the royal family or say to Harry, look, help me because I feel very bad. She didn't do that. She left it sort of lingering. And she didn't um, ask the whole, you know, there's loads of doctors who are at the palace. Um, that's where they, you know, there's all sorts. No, she didn't go there. As a mother, a pretend mother um, in her late 30s, she would have seen the osteopath um, no, she would have seen a gynecologist uh, every two or three weeks. And um, she could have said to him, look, I'm feeling depressed. A lot of women in there, you know, when they're pregnant, they feel very uncomfortable. There's nothing wrong with that. She could have done that. She didn't do that. Um, Harry said he felt he didn't know what to say, so he didn't do anything. But he'd had someone to help him, and he felt um, very low. So the whole thing, I think, is a mess, isn't it? I mean, she didn't think of it as a fairy princess. She thought of it as a way of making money and um, getting help in a very peculiar way. Well, again, it always sort of speaks to this idea that, you know, that they were long-suffering and, and they had no help. Well, part of their problem seems to be who they were complaining to. As you say, there's a medical professional here who you assume uh, some sort of... Uh, basic skill meant that they were able to see that somebody was unhappy, yet they didn't avail themselves of it. They seemingly kept it to themselves until they could turn it into cash. Yes. They, they, I think they used it very much as a, one of their many complaints. Um, but, I mean, if she did feel bad, and women do feel very uncomfortable and things, um, I mean, why didn't she just get help properly herself? Or she could say, to, you know, to Harry, look, come with me and let's talk to the specialist and see, you know. But to actually say they wouldn't help her, that was true, but they couldn't help her because they just helped the staff. They couldn't do royals. It's just not a possibility. So I think it was a real, it was really used for her pleasure, really, strangely said.